very good afternoon to all of you all and nice to see all our doctors here from NIM and the interns and of course our KBC people also welcome. Uh, thank you Dr. Avantika for uh, organizing the recording and all of that. Uh, so it's an honor and pleasure to have with us Dr. Dharav Shah uh, who has, uh, I mean I think it's already come on our WhatsApp group his, you know, the immense experience he has in this area of anti-alcoholism and he's basically a psychiatrist and he's one of the good psychiatrists, I must say. All and psychiatrists <laughs> are good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some better than the others, he's one of the better than the others. Having said that, uh, the last time I'd invited him in another organization that I was working in, I'd invited him for uh, lectures on uh, alcoholism because this was for our community uh, social workers. And then uh, he did, I think, uh, five sessions with them. Uh, he trained them in counseling, management of you know alcoholism, all of that. And at the end of it, they said, Madam, or two sessions on a na. You know, we should have had two more sessions. Ye kya kiya aapne? So that's the kind of popularity he has when it comes to teaching and making people aware of uh, you know uh, this uh, scrooge of alcoholism. So uh, it's a uh, good fortune that he was already in Pune, so we could have this physical meeting, otherwise, this would have been online because of the COVID situation. And coming to COVID, I think a lot of us have read these reports of how people have committed suicide because they couldn't get uh, you know, alcohol to drink and then they were so thrilled. One day I remember going through Koregao Park and I saw this huge line during the lockdown, as soon the lockdown. And I said, mandir nahi hai koi. why is this long queue? And I discovered it was for the wine shop. People were you know, standing there in a long queue to buy alcohol. So uh, alcohol is popular, unfortunately. Uh, people don't know but how to manage you know, the intake of alcohol and that's why we have problems. Uh, I have uh, noticed uh, where I also work in the family court, a lot of families break up because of uh, alcoholism in the house. It's invariably the husband who is you know, drinking constantly and you know, that ruins the family. So this has uh, caused a lot of stress in the society community. And uh, I was also surprised how alcohol is popularized in our films. Uh, I saw one one film, it was an Akshay Kumar film, and his the wife of this uh, protagonist is uh, you know drinking alcohol, and it's it's made into such a entertaining scene where she is you know drinking alcohol and all of that. So now they are also moving the market is moving towards women and then youngsters, youth, and all of that. So I think Dr. Shah has worked very hard to uh, make people aware of the, you know, what alcoholism is all about. So without further ado, I welcome. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Hi. So yes, I don't look like a doctor, but believe me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> so uh, let's directly start away with the topic. But before that, I really I have a dream. Okay, the alcohol problem should decrease in our society. Women should not get hit, children should not have spoiled childhood, etc. But the dream can get fulfilled only if a lot of enthusiastic young people share the dream and work to make it a reality. So today I've got an opportunity to talk to some young doctors who have a lot of power to bring about a change. I'm so really thankful to Madam to give me this opportunity to share my thoughts on this topic with you all. So, Okay, wow, I could do it. <laughs> so Mahindra Singh Dhoni says that he's a great captain because of McDowell's number one. Shah Rukh Khan says that his life is large because of Royal Stag. In fact, Kingfisher is the only thing which is keeping the Indian cricket team bound together. <laughs> there is such a strong propaganda to make us believe that this is the secret to happiness and success. And therefore, before how to quit and how to solve it, we need to understand in detail what this thing is so that we are able to counter the aggressive marketing. So we will start with how does alcohol kill? Then we will go to before it kills also, how does it impair the quality of our life? Then we will look at some misconceptions which make us believe that it is safe to drink. And then we will see as a society how we can work on preventing this problem. And then briefly we will cover for those who are addicted 
what are the treatment options available for them so as i was discussing with you even when i talk to medical students and i ask them how does alcohol kill liver damage is the only confident answer which comes but out of 100 people who die because of alcohol only 21% die because of liver cirrhosis because we are not aware of the whole spectrum of damage which alcohol does the industry is able to fool us so the second most common way it kills is accidents you will say ha accidents we knew but somehow we don't connect it then comes heart attacks and strokes everyone knows little bit alcohol is good for the heart but actually the pattern in which most people end up drinking it's heart heart attacks and strokes are one of the most common ways in which alcohol kills well educated people also do am i right so when you take alcohol or tobacco the inner lining of your arteries gets damaged and the coagulability of blood increases because of which the atherosclerosis risk becomes more so when the artery to the heart narrows down and finally blocks heart doesn't get blood you get a heart attack when the artery to the brain gets blocked you get a stroke fine then comes infectious diseases like tb pneumonia aids how does alcohol cause tb any guesses so the tb bacteria is in all of us but we don't get tb because i am not very sure that we have fit enough mm-hmm. we can fight it so around 20% of tb deaths are because of the increased immunity caused by alcohol okay. similarly pneumonia and now covid in this pandemic fortunately unfortunately it's a disease which affects those who are not fit enough because immunity is not good enough right and so it has become all the more critical to not take this slow poison which keeps harming our health gradually make sense hmm? hiv and aids how does alcohol increase the risk of hiv and aids so as you know hiv happens because of mm-hmm. aids happens because of that hiv happens because of unprotected sex mm-hmm. and why would someone do unprotected sex with a stranger or a random person many factors but one of the factors is the intoxicated state where you know you are not thinking right so alcohol impairs your sense of judgment which makes you take risky unbalanced decisions and the you get a risk of hiv and once you get hiv you drink and you spoil your health and you get aids faster cancers just as tobacco causes a lot of cancers now there is evidence that alcohol is etiologically related means alcohol is the causative factor for a lot of cancers especially cancers of the mouth pharynx larynx esophagus colon rectum and female breast okay then comes murders and suicides murders so you will you have seen the film no one killed jessica heard of the film yeah so the guy walks into a bar is intoxicated one more drink no you don't give me a drink no hit ya so on small small things because the sense of judgment is gone impulsively they enter into fights at times end up killing people and next day morning by the time they come to their senses it is too late okay. according to who 18% murders and 18% suicides in our society are attributable to alcohol 18% okay suicides why suicides because people who get addicted to alcohol are they bad people they are very well aware that because of me my wife is sad my children are sad their education is suffering there is poverty this that and yet i am not able to stop it i am a man i am a dog i am an idiot what am i do i have a right to live and then under the intoxicated state when the judgment is not there and they are feeling very bad about themselves they commit suicide when i was doing my resident internship we used to go to the burns ward to examine the people who come there most of the burns 
where accidental burns or homicidal burns. Suicidal burns is a rare thing. No one wants to die by burning. Huh? Hanging is much better. Poison is much better. Burn kar ke kyun banega, right? The only patients who would burn themselves for suicidal burns only means what I most commonly only saw was alcohol dependent people. Because in the intoxicated state, judgment is not there and they're feeling pathetic about themselves and they burn themselves. Okay? They shout three, four days in the burn squad and die. Do their wives also commit suicide? Supposingly, there is a female who has married to a person who is alcohol dependent and she believes and she feels her life is ruined. What solution does she have? She is it possible that she can make him quit? Of course, yes. He can take treatment, this, that, this, that. How many people agree for tre tre treatment? Uh -huh, you have opened my eyes. Yes, I should quit this thing. Come, let's go to the doctor. How many husbands do that? Common, rare. rare. More towards rare. So he doesn't want to quit. He believes he's in control. You, I'm married to a person like you. My fortune. Therefore, I have to drink to survive. That is his explanation for his drinking. So what is the solution she has? Divorce? Yes, it's a good solution, but does it happen in our country easily? So many a times the wife commits suicide. Many a times the children commit suicide. Because the boy has seen his mother get hit all his life and he's not able to help the mother. And one of my patients who committed suicide, his mother would shout at him. If he shouts back at the father, hey, why are you doing this to mother? Why are you drinking? The mother would shout at him. It's between me and him. You don't have to speak in between. Nothing wrong or right. I'm just saying that's what happens. And the child is confused. What do I do? What do I think about the whole mess? And of course, it's a complicated mess to process. And some of them end up in suicide. Point I'm trying to just make is the, the impact of alcohol on the lives of people is much bigger than liver cirrhosis. Right? And it's important that we communicate this to the society as well. And why do we blame it on alcohol when a person commits accident or murders or suicides? It's a person's fault, right? Why blame it on alcohol? We blame it on alcohol because it's a physiological property of alcohol to impair your sense of judgment and your ability and control of your body. Example, if you're driving and you're intoxicated, then you can see the person. You want to put the brakes. You want to turn the wheels. But your hands and legs are not in your control. Your ability to judge the distance between the car and the person in front of you is decreased. So these are physiological properties of alcohol. The driver of Salman Khan's car ended up killing a person. Why? Was the person driving a very bad person? Did he want to kill the person? He was intoxicated. And in his place, if I or you were there, we would have ended up doing the same thing. And that is why these accidents, murders, suicides are attributable to alcohol. Got it? Okay. So this is about the problem. So as I said, according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a lot of cancers are now causally related to alcohol. In India, no. Across the world, 26% of oral cancer deaths, 20% of TB deaths, 18% murder and suicides, 13% of epilepsy deaths and 12% of drowning deaths are attributable to alcohol. Before Sri Devi ji died by drowning in a tub, we didn't even know that drowning se death ho sakta hai. You know? But in USA, on an average, every day one person dies by drowning in a bathtub because of being intoxicated under drugs or alcohol. Okay? For Sri Devi ji, we don't know the autopsy report exactly. I'm just saying. A drowning is a cause of death also. Then there is a popular misconception that in cold climates, one has to drink alcohol. Okay? Otherwise, you can't survive. Is that true? Okay. It's definitely not true. Being intoxicated, drinking alcohol increases your chances of frostbite and hypothermia deaths. In a cold climate, the objective of the body is to conserve the heat within the body. 
So the peripheral vessels constrict. Blood doesn't come to the skin. When you drink alcohol, the peripheral vessels dilate. More blood comes to the skin and you feel warm. But the body is actually losing the heat which was supposed to be conserved within the body. And in the intoxicated state, they expose themselves to cold more than required. And they feel warm, they don't realize it. And by morning, they end up with frostbites or hypothermia deaths. Indian Army to free me Kashmir me soldiers ko pilati hai. Indian Army gives free alcohol throughout the country, not just in Kashmir. And in Kashmir also, on the day of your duty, you are strictly not supposed to drink. So when the Indian Army wants the soldiers to perform better, it doesn't give them alcohol. So alcohol is not for survival or generation of heat, it is for recreation. It's a bad policy which needs to be changed. There is not, nothing survival in it. Clear? So a lot of road traffic accidents we all know it because of that. So a lot of convincing data is there which we can use to convince people. But all this is lying based in medical journals. If only we take this data to the common man. Are youths fooled to hit the X on their own leg? But no one is going and convincing them that this is an X. Luckily, there is very strong data now which we can use to convince people. Alcohol kills 30 lakh people every year. One death every 10 seconds. And yet, this is a substance which we decorate in living rooms and show to guests at this brand. Sheer lack of perspective as to what this substance is actually doing to our society. And that's because everyone believes, as we were discussing, that ah, those poor people who drink excessively, it's applicable to them. I am an educated, smart person. I am going to drink responsibly. It cannot happen to me. And this delusion makes well-educated doctors, engineers, lawyers keep taking it, in spite of all the evidence about how much harm it causes people. So friends, it's important to keep in mind, none of us is unique. It's an addictive substance and any person who touches an addictive substance, not everyone will get dependent, but anyone who touches can get dependent. And once you get dependent, you know what happens. We'll discuss tobacco and cannabis very briefly because as a society we have accepted it is bad. Alcohol to bad hi hai. Therefore we will focus on alcohol. Okay? Tobacco we know, but the poor lower socioeconomic strata in our society yet doesn't regard tobacco to be very bad. Some of them will come and say, Doctor, we don't do this, we only eat tobacco. <laughs> it's regarded to be a relatively safe addiction. Please come in. Okay? So, we need to tell them that tobacco doesn't intoxicate you. But, as a poison, it is as harmful for the body as alcohol. Alcohol kills 30 lakh people every year. How much does tobacco kill? Guess? 80 lakhs. More than double. Partly because the number of consumers are more than double. And partly because it is toxic to the body. Okay? Again, with tobacco, the only thing we think of is cancers. But when you smoke, you damage your lungs. You are more vulnerable for tuberculosis, pneumonia, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. <laughs> you keep panting because your lungs are damaged, oxygen exchange with the blood doesn't happen. And then again, arteries, heart attacks and strokes. The most common way tobacco kills in India is heart attacks and strokes and not cancers. But how many people are aware that tobacco causes heart attacks? Okay. So we need to make people aware that the problem is much bigger than what they think. Just I quote one study. There is a now it is a 50 year long study on a sample size of 34,000 UK doctors, which has proven that one in two chronic smokers, long term smokers, die prematurely, on an average 10 years prematurely. And their risk of dying before the age of 70, pre prematurely, was three times higher compared to non-smokers. The evidence is conclusive. And that is why cigarette companies are forced to write on their packet tobacco kills. If evidence were not conclusive, they wouldn't agree to do that. They're forced to do that. Right? So in spite of that, some people would keep telling, if this person used to drink, used to smoke, he lived till 90, he lived till 
हंड्रेड इयर्स कुछ नहीं होता इट्स एफ सो इफ यू वेयर अ हेलमेट यू विल नॉट डाय एंड इफ यू डोंट वेयर अ हेलमेट यू विल डाय इज देर एनी गारंटी कंक्लूजन If you wear a helmet or you don't wear a helmet, there is no difference. Do you conclude that? So evidence is there that if you wear a helmet, the probability that you will be saved is increased significantly. Similarly, evidence is conclusive that the probability of dying prematurely is three times higher. Now, if you want to keep citing exceptions and fool your own self, you are free to do that. Okay, but. we don't go by exceptions of course we go by what is the rule right okay so it's responsible for 16% of the male premature deaths across the world okay and that's how bad this substance is in india of course oral tobacco is a bigger problem than that and this substance which after high blood pressure is the second most common risk factor for a premature death is consumed by 42% males in our country something which is killing 80 lakh people is consumed by 42% males in your country are these people fools why are they taking it is it because they are fools or is it because no one went and explained them what kind of substance is this thing is am i right so 50 years back smoking was a socially acceptable thing in the western countries but then studies like this came and they proved and they, they proved that it is killing a lot of people 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 became aware of these studies and therefore tobacco has lost the social acceptance in the western world in our country still people are not aware of these studies right if we make people aware of these studies then in our country also things can change on tobacco one slide sorry cannabis there is a growing propaganda that tobacco is bad cannabis is safe okay so just one thing about cannabis today that out of all the substances of intoxication and addiction the risk of developing schizophrenia making you mad is highest for cannabis okay so a study done in finland i guess i'm not sure which country but it showed that in youngsters who started cannabis use cannabis use at the age of 15 or 16 when the brain is still developing okay so in them the risk of developing psychosis was 6.4 times higher compared to those who had not taken cannabis fine is that risk small okay so i have my thesis topic was cannabis induced psychosis and that's when i realized that alcohol tobacco are not the only thing which are very common and destroying the youth cannabis is also doing that in a big way and we need to let people know that there is a belief that the artist community especially believes that cannabis makes you more creative so when you take cannabis your reality touch goes off you feel that colors are more beautiful sounds are more musical and everything appears very new and different okay so one of one medical student who was intoxicated in cannabis started believing that mai krish hu and he wanted to jump from the third floor luckily his friends knew ke wo krish nahi hai and pakad ke rakha okay so if you want to become hero and smart and creative in an imaginary world then you take cannabis if you want to become smart in the real world then you need to stay away from it because just as in the alcohol intoxication your confidence is double but your ability is half <laughs> similarly under cannabis intoxication also your ability is decrease they don't increase okay so so yeah we need to remove the misconceptions of around cannabis also nowadays fine Let's come to the second part. So, first point we made is alcohol kills a lot of people premature. Correct. Second, जल्दी मरेगा फर्क नहीं पड़ता जब तक जिएगा ऐश करके जिएगा. Is that true? Do people 
who take alcohol, do they have a better quality of life? Okay. So there are multiple ways in which alcohol impairs the quality of your life. So one from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, it causes multiple disabling diseases. I won't go in that today, you all know it. I just talk of one psychological disease called as cannabis induced, sorry, alcohol induced psychosis. And that is delusion of infidelity. Which means that the husband would get a doubt that my wife is having an affair with someone. His parents will tell him, Kare, she is a very good wife. You idiot have got such a good wife, lucky fellow. We know her, she is not doing anything. No, she is going out. He would lock her and go, coming back, window was open, whom were you talking to? Thabak, thabak, thabak. So you may have seen the film Omkara. So in that they have shown okay, how because of doubt he kills the wife. This delusion of infidelity is pretty common in those who are addicted to alcohol. So lot of physical and mental diseases which destroy the quality of your life. Second is importance. So when the artery to the heart gets blocked, you get a heart attack. When the artery to the brain gets blocked, you get a stroke. And when the artery to the penis gets constricted, your ability to have an erection decreases. And then the person and his wife have to live sexually frustrated lives. And alcohol is an aphrodisiac, which means increases your desire to have sex. Double fatka. Ichha bhaut hoti hai kar kuch bhi nipa. Right? Stamina. When your heart is damaged, when your lungs are damaged, lungs because of smoking, when your legs are damaged, when the arteries to the legs get blocked, you get something called as peripheral vascular disease. Initially, when you try to walk, you initially when you run, you get pain. Then when you walk, you get pain. Then slowly while sitting also, you get pain. There is blackening of the arteries, I mean of the toes and then you have to cut the toes. Right? 80% of peripheral vascular disease is because of smoking. Right? But anyways, the point is, when your lungs, heart, hands, legs are damaged, your stamina decreases. Especially when you are counselling people from the lower socio-economic strata. We need to tell the youth that it damages your stamina. When they initially go to work, their seniors would tell them, You don't drink? You don't smoke? How will you work? And they like, huh? Till today we felt that all these things harm the body. If you don't drink, you can't work. So then at the end of a tired day, he smokes, he drinks. And he actually feels better and he's actually able to work more. Now why is he able to work more? Is it because his stamina has become he has become a stronger per person? It's because it just made him forget the pain. Like if your girlfriend leaves you when you go, ah, so the girlfriend doesn't come back. You just forget that she has left you. Right? You just forget the pain. Similarly, you forget the physical fatigue. But your strength is not improving. In fact, your stamina is decreasing. So you need to tell them, okay, do you want to remain fit? I mean, do you want to be able to work one hour more now? Or do you want to be able to remain fit to be able to do physical work even 20 years from now? Right? So in many villages, you will see that around 20% of the males in that village are of no use to the family. The full day they will drink and they will remain, smoke, drink, chat. The wife has to be the earning member of the family. And that's because they have lost the capacity to work. So do you want to maintain your capacity for the work in the long run? Or you just want to keep forgetting your stress? What's the point? So we need to be able to explain them before their seniors tell them that drinking and smoking is a good way to work better. Fourth, it's a financial disaster. Poor people who come to quit alcohol in government hospitals, they have blown 5 to 6 lakhs on alcohol before they come to us. Just imagine where that poor family would have been if he would have not been drinking. Right? So, you will see that from Vijay Malya to a person selling alcohol in a village. People who sell alcohol, tobacco, they are very rich. Shares of tobacco companies are one of the highest selling shares in the society. 
people who deal with this addictive poisons are rich but at the cost of maintaining the poverty in the society even if you take the case of tobacco alcohol drains so much money tobacco will not drain that much but does tobacco also drain money even if you take 10 rupees a day it comes to 300 a month and for a person a poor person earning 3000 a month that is 10% of his salary and as the income grows the pan masala also that some simple tobacco nahi hota fir wo gutka hota hai ye hota hai wo hota hai poor families lose around 5 to 10% of their income on tobacco so does it maintain the poverty in our society right absolutely yes occupational impairment it's across the board i'll quote example of a doctor to just let you know that it's across the board so in the medical college where i was working a particular department the hou used to drink so everyone who would join that unit would drink to keep the boss happy and to be in his good books and anyways everyone is drinking let us also drink invariably for the first time if they are drinking they would get intoxicated more and the lecturer would tell them aise peete hain gawaro ki tarah meri aur dekho learn to drink like a gentleman in control and then when that unit had that emergency duty one day there was a complication in the ot and the residents needed the lecturer but his cell was switched off and after run, run, running for half an hour he was found in his friend's room intoxicated point i'm making is pilots are known to report on duty intoxicated doctors are known to be on duty intoxicated it's across the board if a particular society alcohol drinking is common then alcohol related accidents and mishaps at work will happen there are some seats empty over here feel free to come here sir if you want there are seats empty it decreases your attractiveness the companies want you to believe that if you drink alcohol girls will get attracted to you like a magnet दूध पीते हो छी 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 ही वॉज फाइव थाउजेंड सच्चे मर्द हो तुम इज इट ट्रू दैट गर्ल्स गेट इम्प्रेस विद दो ड्रिंक सो सर्वेज हैव कंसिस्टेंटली शोन दैट वीमेन डू नॉट लाइक गाइज यू ड्रिंक एंड दे डेट इट वेन देर पार्टनर इज इंटॉक्सिकेटेड ही स्टिंग्स राइट सो वेन योर माउथ इज स्टिंकिंग यू डोंट नो वेर यू आर गोइंग and girls will feel wow what a cool <laughs> is it possible okay it's just a company tactic to make you believe that you become more attractive and smart so i had gone to a particular school and i i saw that boys were sitting at a katta and then a girl came and when the girl came actually the boys got down they removed the cigarette and they started smoking they actually believe that girls is going to get impressed okay now when you smoke the drinking is sooner your mouth stings your lips become blackened if you take tobacco your teeth fall it's staining of the teeth you know so how how does all this make a person any more attractive fine it's definitely a bluff of the industry to tempt you into getting it. so madangi ke jitne bhi parameters hai your ability your attractiveness your sexual power your financial capacity your physical stamina and your professional efficiency everything takes a beating so mardangi badhti hai ya kam hoti hai kam hoti hai badhti to definitely nahi right when you talk to youngsters you need to drive this point home that it is not a symbol of your masculinity it is actually going to decrease your masculinity right? now this is a simple way to explain why do people get addicted if you tell someone akal nahi kya daru bhi peeta hai तो बोलेगा खुद के पैसे की पीता हूँ तेरे पैसे की नहीं पीता चुप बैठ बट इफ यू टॉक रिस्पेक्टफुल के अंकल तंबक से तो कैंसर होता है अंकल दारू से तो नुकसान हो जाता है ये होता है वो होता है क्यों लेते हो तो देन यूजुअली द आंसर विल बी बेटा किसको लेना है फंस गया हूँ लेना पड़ता है You feel oh, good. Cheese, but I'm a man. Too good. 
But at the end of it, you don't come back to normal. Once you have taken it a few times, your mind gets used to it. So, when you get first rank, when you win a match, when you do something good, and someone compliments you, you feel good. Why? Because whenever something good happens, the reward neurotransmitter in the brain called dopamine. There's a spark of it. So dopamine rises in your brain and you feel good. But you have to make some effort and do something for getting that high, right? Compared to that, just take a peg and just make a smoke and you feel high. Yeah. So it's nice, right? You can feel happy and as if you are a very successful person just by smoking or drinking. So that's a very good feeling. That's a very easy way to feel life is going great. But then the brain gets used to that constantly high dopamine level. And then it resets the baseline. And now you need a higher level of dopamine to feel high. So initially the kick which you got with one drink, then you would need two, then you would need three, then you would need four. Okay? That is what we all know as tolerance. And now, now that the baseline is shifted up, something called as desensitization of the receptors or down regulation of the receptors. So now if you don't get that high, then you start believing that something very bad is taking place, life is sad and the, you experience withdrawal symptoms. Okay? So if you are addicted to alcohol, your hands will tremor, you will feel restless, irritable, you won't get sleep. And if you are addicted for a long time, more than 5-10 years, then you in the withdrawal state, you can get convulsions. You can get auditory hallucinations. You can get visual hallucinations. And something known as delirium tremens. So because of all these symptoms and the delirium state, the person is not able to know where he is, where he is, who is there, and he can hear, he can see big dogs running behind him, and he runs, 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 and gets admitted to a psychiatry hospital. Right? So, the point I'm making is, once you get used to it, if you don't take it, you get withdrawal symptoms, which keep worsening with time, and the need keeps increasing with time. This is tolerance, this is withdrawal. And the third property is craving. What do you mean by craving? So once you take a substance, then you decide, hey, hey, bad thing, I should not take it. But then you see someone drinking and you are like, Aaj le leti hu kal se right? <coughs> So this severe irresistible desire to keep taking this substance, this is called as craving. Friends, are craving, tolerance, withdrawal, are these properties of the substance or are these properties of the person? Person, yeah. So the same person, if I give chapati, apple, hmm? would he become addicted to that? Apple, 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 apple. Will you do that? <laughs> Why not? Because it's not a property of the person. It's a property of the substance. There is a reason why we call alcohol, tobacco, brown sugar, cannabis addictive substances. It's their property. It's a physiological property. It's not about your willpower. Will any one of you say, my willpower is strong. You put sugar on my tongue, it won't taste sweet. Will any one of you say that? Because it's a physiological property of sugar to taste sweet. Addictiveness is a physiological property of the substances. Does it make sense to say my willpower is strong so I won't get addicted to an addictive substance? Friends, there are enough number of people with great willpowers, doctors, lawyers, engineers, film stars, this, that, who had achieved a lot of success in life because of their willpower and many other qualities. But they got ruined because they touched this substance. Right? It can happen to anyone. The problem is you will see a lot of people who are not addicted and who drink in parties. So then you will be like, I will also drink like that. So yes, not everyone gets addicted. But around 15 to 15% 15 people get addicted. Is that a small number? 15% means if 100 of you are sitting here and all of you start drinking in parties to just enjoy occasionally. 10 years down the line, 
15 of you will get ruined. Is that a small number? And there is no guarantee. You will be in the 85 or you will be in the 15. And therefore, of course, there are some risk factors which increase your risk. But no one of us can have a guarantee that there is no risk. There is nothing which people know. If, if people knew so confidently that I have this risk and I, I will get it, then it was so easy for people with risk factors to not take it. Okay? Some people believe that there is a genetic risk. Even if we accept that for the... So, so yes, of course there is a genetic risk. Diabetes has a genetic risk. Am I right? So diabetes is a genetic disorder or a lifestyle disorder? It's a lifestyle disorder because genetic has a small role. That doesn't decide everything. Similarly, in alcohol dependence, genetic is a small role. So if your father has alcohol dependence and you start it, so there is a very high probability you are also going to get ruined. But in your family, no one is dependent. That doesn't mean you won't get it. The single most important reason why you get addicted is your decision to touch an addictive substance. <coughs> okay? Fine. The point I am making is, should we learn from our own experience or it's better to learn from the experience of others? At times it's better, right? So, if you know that there is a lot of dal dal, then what will you do? Dal dal? What will you do? I have never seen it. I will put it in one bar and put it in one bar. We do that. This substance is a growing lax of families. Is it necessary to test it on your family before deciding that no, I don't want to take it? As a psychiatrist, the kind of pain I have witnessed in the lives of the wives and the children and these people themselves makes me feel very sad that something which creates so much pain and sorrow in our society is the in thing in our youngsters. It's the cool thing. And I believe it's my responsibility to at least let all of you know what can happen. And then the choice is yours. Right? Okay. So it's an addictive substance. Eighth way it impairs your quality of life, it harms your mental health. People want to become happy and therefore they drink and smoke. But the prevalence of depression and anxiety is higher in those who drink and smoke. A meta-analysis of 102 studies, collectively a sample of more than 1,50,000 people across the world, that meta-analysis showed that people who quit smoking, the rate of anxiety and depression decreased. And the magnitude of this effect was equivalent to that of antidepressant medicines. Okay? So, the point I am making is, it doesn't make you happy. So, let us understand it. Okay? Many people with tobacco will take you, will tell you, that if you have to take the tobacco, you will have to take the tobacco. So, tobacco is making them alcohol, making them feel happy. It gives them a kick. Of course it gives. Okay? But, most of the day, <laughs> after half an hour, they will be in withdrawal. And unless there are a chain smoker who smokes every 10 minutes, every half an hour, they are going to keep remaining here most of the day. Right? Only when they smoke or drink, they come back to normal and they feel good. But people like you and me who don't smoke, don't drink, feel normal anyways. So, people who are used to smoking, exam time they have to increase their smoking to deal with the exam stress. But people who don't smoke are able to deal with the same stress without smoking as well. Am I right? So, smoking and drinking just solves the anxiety and depression which it itself has caused. Got the point? So, it temporarily solves the problem which itself has created. People who take tobacco cannot go to the toilet in the morning. Right? Till they don't take their tobacco or smoke, they cannot pass tools. But many of us can pass tools without smoking. So that doesn't mean smoking is required to pass tools. Smoking itself has created the problem, which now is required to solve it temporarily. But once they stop it, within around a week, the body recovers and then regains the capacity. So you have to tell them, you just have to suffer the withdrawals for three days, severe withdrawals, mild withdrawals for a week or two. If you suffer that, then a lifetime of happiness waits for you. Okay?
and of course there are medicines which can further decrease the severity of these withdrawal symptoms. If you see the MRI of a normal person with someone who has taken alcohol for more than 10 years, what is the difference you see? The black spaces, the empty spaces have become more, right? It damages your brain, right? which is the main organ which differentiates man from other animals and gives us our power. It is a gateway drug. What do you mean by that? So, youngsters will look at Sanjay Dutt's posters on the buses. Aaj goa khaya gaya. They will look at ads in the TV. You hi nahi ban jata, kuch nahi ban jata. Subhe, char bajay uthke, jangal mein jake, chuninda jhaado se, yaha maha se, yaha maha se, rajri ban jata. अजय देवगन कम पढ़ रहा था तो शाहरुख खान ने भी अभी शुरू कर दिया है राइट केसर दुनिया भर में फैलाएंगे ओके व्हाट एवर दे से लुकिंग एट ऑल दिस एड्स इट्स बट ऑबवियस यंगस्टर्स फील चल ना देखेंगे क्या है अच्छा होगा बार-बार पांडवपुर पे जाएंगे फिर कोई बोलेगा बच्चे और बात कब तक करेगा बड़ा गुटखा खा तंबाकू खा सिगरेट ले आफ्टर सम टाइम समवन विल से रियल स्टफ जाना है one thing gives rise to the other because your company gets spoiled, right? So they are gateway drugs. So they are themselves very bad, but more than that, they spoil your company and introduce you to a path which takes you down the line. You will never find a single person who is taking brown sugar, cannabis, or any of the illegal drugs, but who had never taken alcohol or tobacco before that. If we make sure that the youngsters in our society don't take alcohol or tobacco, the problem of illegal drugs will automatically get solved. Right? Now, pan masala is the new gateway drug because it is marketed. It doesn't have tobacco. So is pan masala safe because it doesn't have tobacco? Pan masala is not safe. Pan masala has supari. Is supari addictive? Supari is also addictive. Supari is also carcinogenic. Supari is also harmful. Okay? So, pan masala has supari and many other harmful chemicals. And it acts as a gateway drug, taking you to tobacco and other substances also. So, we must tell youngsters not to take supari either. Does it harm your family also? Of course, yes. We all know domestic violence, this, that. When I was in a school, so the teacher said, that this fourth standard girl is not able to focus on her studies. They have gone part of school mental health program. So I talked to the kid. Kita kya hai? Why are you not able to focus on your studies? She says, nahi, nahi, kuch nahi. Next time I go to the school, Kita kya problem hai? Nahi, kuch nahi. Third time I go, Kita, tell me, what is the problem? The teacher is not able to focus on studies. She says, nahi, my father drinks, na, so he hits my mother daily. So then I, I feel, stressed, dar lagta hai and kabhi kabhi mujhe bhi maatte hai so as soon as mein ghar jati hu, phir mein khaat ke niche chup ke bed jati hu aur school mein bhi jab padai karte hai to wohi sab yaad aate rehta hai to phir padai pe jandhi dhe I told her, thik hai beta but this is the third time we are meeting pehle kyo nahi bataya she says, mere ghar ki ijjat aise hi kisi ko bhi bata hai fourth standard girl Dealing with all this alone. And can you imagine how many children like this will be there in our country? The number would be in blacks. And that's the true picture of our power. It's not just a spirit of friendship, it's a spirit which brings tears of hell to a lot of families. Okay? Okay. So fine, there are a lot of ways in which alcohol harms. The children pick up the addiction. Does it harm the pregnancy? The fetus? Fetal alcohol syndrome. All of us know. Can you guess in USA, how many pregnant women were drinking alcohol in a survey by the Center for Disease Control USA? It's an authentic survey. Can you guess the number? 10%. Did these women know that the fetus will get harmed? Yes, no. Most of them, no? 
people are not able to stop it. Do we as a society want to move in that direction of a drinking culture? In our society, we, women take tobacco. Now, of course, they don't know it can harm the fetus. But then they take tobacco. When the husband smokes and she smokes the tobacco passage smoking, that also harms the fetus. And therefore, especially when you are meeting a pregnant woman and if she is taking tobacco, it's a very good time to help her quit, not to just judge her. See, all these women who take alcohol or tobacco when they are pregnant, they are not bad mothers, right? They care for their baby, but they are addicted, they are trapped. And we need to help them to quit. Right? Okay. Okay, I see that I have run out of time. So I am going to skip a few slides. Um, so, it is so bad. But yet, as a society, we don't regard it to be bad. Is alcohol increasing in our society? Rapidly? Something, I, I skipped the previous slide. According to Global Burden of Disease Study, Alcohol is the most common risk factor for death and disability in the young age group of 15 to 49. Most common risk factor. The most common risk factor is rapidly increasing in our society and we are not bothered. Why? Sheer lack of perspective. We are just happy to believe in what Dhoni and Shahrukh Khan are telling us. They get Padma Shri's for educating the youngsters of our country to drink. I got off track. But the point I am making is, we need to tell our youngsters, okay, is Dhoni a great cricketer? Absolutely yes. Is he a responsible citizen? Is he worthy of being role model for youngsters of our country? In my personal opinion, 100% no. We need to teach our youngsters, these are selfish people who don't care for what happens to you. So, blindly don't trust whatever they say. They are good in their field, respect them for that, but beyond that, they are not worthy of being your role model. In my opinion, we need to tell this to the youngsters. But, coming back to the point, this sheer lack of perspective. And this lack of perspective is because of lack of awareness and certain misconceptions. So, I am going to briefly go through the misconceptions. First is alcohol in moderation is good for the heart. So there are some studies which say alcohol in moderation is good for the heart. But there are many other studies which say even alcohol in moderation is not good for the heart. Okay? However, these studies don't come in papers. It's the first category of studies which come in papers. Point one, this is not a conclusively proven thing. Okay? Point two, at least in the Indian scenario, a randomized controlled trial, a multicentric study, had, sorry, not randomized controlled trial, a multicentric study has shown that at least in the Indian population, even occasional drinkers, the risk of coronary heart disease was 1.2 times more. Okay? So it's not true. I'll go a bit fast. The American Heart Association issues a warning on their website that this claim is not proven. And even if true, the potential dangers of drinking far outweigh the claimed benefits and it is not possible to predict in which person alcoholism will become a problem. Hence we caution people, do not start drinking thinking that it will protect your heart. And yet there are a few doctors who will even give lectures, alcohol in moderation is good for your heart, take it. Why would they do that? Partly because they don't know what it is. Okay? They are not well read. But more important reasons are they themselves drink. And they are very happy to reserve. How are you? Alcohol is good for your moderation. So now they don't have a guilty conscience. Right? And third is of course the industry pays some doctors to do it. One of the three reasons. Fourth reason. I mean fourth answer to that. For heart, coronary heart disease, evidence is this that. For cancer, evidence is conclusive that even light alcohol drinking increases your risk of cancer. Thoda piyoge, thoda is, jada piyoge, jada is. So in 2020, heavy drinking was responsible for 3,46,000 cancer cases across the world. 
moderate drinking to like 91,000 cases, and sorry, risky drinking and moderate drinking was responsible for around 1 lakh cancer cases. And moderate drinking मतलब क्या? ये भी पता होना चाहिए. The so-called low risk drinking. That is one to two drinks a day. Hmm? And generally जो लोगों को alcohol की आदत होती है, वो एक दिन में कितना drink करते हैं? डॉक्टर मैं तो सिर्फ एक क्वार्टर पीता हूँ एंड एक क्वार्टर मतलब सिक्स ड्रिंक्स थर्टी एम एल इज वन ड्रिंक एक क्वार्टर इज वन एटी एम एल ओके सो पीपल हु बिलीव मैं तो बड़ा कंट्रोल में पीता हूँ आई टेकिंग थ्री टाइम्स मोर देन द लिमिट ऑफ रिस्की ड्रिंकिंग फाइन सो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर पीपल जो लोग बोलते हैं मैं तो सिर्फ एक बॉटल बियर पीता हूँ तीन बॉटल बियर पीता हूँ सो आई कम टू बियर इज बियर अल्कोहल Yes, no. It is mild alcohol. Beer is around three to seven percent alcohol. Vodka, rum, Atbati, Narangi, Sarangi is forty percent alcohol. Okay. So of course it is more concentrated. But one drink of vodka is thirty ml. One drink of beer is around one seventy five to two twenty five ml. One drink of vodka, one drink of beer. Has the same amount of alcohol, roughly 10 grams. So, you have drank beer for 4 packs and vodka for 4 packs. It's the same thing. Clear? So, it's useful to help people realize that even if they are taking one full bottle of beer, they have taken around four to five drinks of alcohol. Okay? So, that's it. So, point is. हार्ट अटैक का तो ठीक है, बट कैंसर में तो माइल ड्रिंकिंग से भी होता है। एंड देन देर इस ग्लोबल बर्डर ऑफ डिसी स्टडी, जिसने 195 कंट्रीज में अल्कोहल से क्या हार्म होता है, क्या होता है, जिसका जितना भी स्टडी हुआ है, वो सारा देखा है। एंड कलेक्टिवली, इफ यू कंसीडर टू ओवरऑल इंपैक्ट � so if a farmer has a loan of 20,000 and he starts to drink alcohol, will his loan decrease? So loan of 20 will become 40, 60, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, unsolvable, suicide. Am I right? So when you take alcohol, you end up saying tension there. Tension is very much there. You have just killed your ability to think of it. Is this a symbol of smartness? Is this the way you want to deal with your stress? When you deal with your stress like this, you don't work on your stress. And that stress keeps growing. And it increases your stress. Am I right? Fine. So we need to help youngsters believe that there are a lot of healthy ways to deal with your stress. Music, sports, friends, tracks, meditation, yoga, Thousands of constructive ways to deal with your stress. And when you use those ways, you become empowered, you become strong, you develop skills, and people respect you. You become happy now, you become happy in the long run. When you use addictive substances to deal with the stress, you become happy for some time, but in the long term, you have to cry. So the CMO of Sasun, when I was a student there, who signed my internship completion certificate, by the time I finished my psychiatry, he was seen begging around in the campus. That, that's a good thing. And when I met him the second, third time, I realized there's some problem. And he used to go to his professor friends, and the professors will tell the pune, wo pevda aya to usko baat se nikal dene ka. So for a lot of years, alcohol may have helped him enjoy and celebrate and decrease his stress. But today it has taken away his job, money, respect, everything. So it worsens the stress in the long run and it's better not take it. Then as I said, responsible drinking. So far as you drink responsibly, it's safe. Once a person becomes addicted, we teach people, addiction is a disease. Don't hate the person. He's not intentionally doing it. He's trapped. Right? Right? But while telling youngsters, we don't tell addiction is a disease. It can happen to anyone. People don't intentionally do it. You can also develop it. Youngsters ko bolte huye, drink responsibly. Is drinking responsibly or irresponsibly completely in your hand? It's not in your hand. 
नो वन प्लान आज के लिए बहुत सारा पिएगा और वो वाले गटर में जाके सोएगा कितने लोग पीते हैं तो हमने जो पहले पंद्रह परसेंट देखा ना वो तो एडिक्ट हो गए मोस्ट एक्सीडेंट आर नॉट डन बाई एडिक्ट They're done by people who binge in parties, people who have good jobs, good education, but who binge in parties. And studies say that out of hundred people who drink alcohol, more than fifty percent have binge drinking. Okay? जब पीते हैं टुल्लो जाते हैं, रोज नहीं पीते, but जब पीते हैं पांच या उससे ज़्यादा drinks. जैसे मैंने बोला, एक क्वार्टर तो डे नहीं का है. And binge का definition is five or more drinks on a single day. And जो लोग पीते हैं वो तो एक क्वार्टर से स्टार्ट करते हैं. Right? So lot of people drink, end up drinking in binges, and therefore party drinking also, according to me, is stupidity. मैं जब पुणे में पढ़ाई करता था, मैं एक आंटी के यहाँ खाना खाने जाता था. She used to run a mess at her home. Her husband used to work in a bank. He was a good husband, no problem. He used to drink in parties like so many well-educated people. One day while returning from a party, he lost the balance of his bike. Accident. He was in KEM for 20 days, 10 lakhs bill, because he was intoxicated. If insurance was not sanctioned, died. Earning member gone. She had to start a mess, and one room was given on given on a paying guest basis. One day of party changed life for the whole family. A medical student in a particular college. Party far. Yeah, go intoxication. Me. Vomit hua. Is it common? Intoxicated state में vomit आना. Vomiting हुआ. सबके सामने vomit खराब दिखेगा. Try to control. Try to go out of the room. Under the intoxicated state, re reflexes were not working well. Vomitus went in the lung. Three days in the ICU. Died. Another medical college student. Party. वापस आते हुए bike dashed against the pole. Head got decapitated. Other side of the road. Instead, death. thousands of examples within one day of party can change your life, or you can kill someone and spend seven years in jail thinking, "I was a good person. How did I end up murdering someone?" Okay. Parties, and as I said, the parties, and as I said, there are a lot of women who come to me and say, "I can never imagine alcohol is going to ruin my life." Because at the time of marriage, he would drink once in a month, once in two months. But ten years later, what will happen? No one can guarantee. Okay, so no one is a born addict. So party drinking, the risks would be binge drinking, risk of addiction, and of course behavioral problems. Under the intoxicated state, you end up saying things, doing things which you later regret. Right? So you, drinking after drinking. स्मार्ट बिहेव करते हो कि ओवर स्मार्ट बिहेव करते हो एंड यू राइट मैसेज अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड यू एक्चुअली डोंट मीन दैट इट्स योर इंटॉक्सिकेटेड एंड यू डोंट कुछ भी लिख लिख दिया मन में आया बट पीपल आर गोना टेक इट एज अंदर से बाहर आया पीके अंदर का वॉइस बाहर आया दैट्स इज ट्रू सेल्फ एंड द मैसेज व्हिच यू हैव सेंड ही और शी विल शो द सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ योर ट्रुथ टू एवरीवन दिस इज इज ट्रू सेल्फ So the respect which you have earned throughout your year, you can lose by what you behave in an intoxicated state, and therefore I believe party drinking also doesn't make sense. So let's end with the point. इतना सब कुछ प्रूव नहीं है, but बदल नहीं रहा. इसका एक कारण है, we are not working on prevention. We are focused on addict होने के बाद थोड़े लोग जो आएंगे छोड़ने, उनके साथ खेलते रहने का. उसमें से थोड़े लोग छोड़ेंगे. और यहाँ पे शाहरुख खान धोनी और नए यंगस्टर्स को लाखों की संख्या में पिला रहे विल यू एवर बी एबल टू सॉल्व दिस वी टू वर्क ऑन प्रिवेंशन एंड एज डॉक्टर्स पीपल इन द हेल्थ फील्ड वी कैन डू समथिंग कॉल इज ब्रीफ इंटरवेंशन कवर दैट ब्रीफली विच कंट्री गेट्स हार्म मोर बाय अल्कोहल इंडिया और यूएसए इंडिया वाई नंबर नहीं पूछ रहा हूँ यार 
मुंबई में प्रॉब्लम ज्यादा है कि इंडिया में तो इंडिया में नंबर बढ़ा प्रपोर्शन वाइज विच कंट्री गेट्स आउट इंडिया वाइज इग्नोरेंस लैक ऑफ नॉलेज सो व्हेन अ वेल एजुकेटेड साइकेट्रिस्ट लाइक मी ड्रीम्स विल ही गेट हम देन व्हाई इंडिया व्हाई इंडिया ये नंबर नहीं पूछ रहा हूँ प्रपोर्शन पूछ रहा हूँ और यूएसए का पॉपुलेशन हमसे बढ़ा है तो पॉपुलेशन नहीं बोलने का वाणी करते कुछ लोग बोलते क्वालिटी ऑफ अल्कोहल वहां पे बेटर क्वालिटी मिलता है यहाँ पे खराब क्वालिटी मिलता है है ना सो अगर आप खराब क्वालिटी का जहर पियोगे मर जाओगे और अच्छे क्वालिटी का जहर पीने पर क्या होता है This is the rich blend of the finest antique grains from us. अभी कुछ नहीं होगा बहुत अच्छा क्वालिटी का जहर ओके द आंसर इज यू एस ए बट द कॉन्फिडेंट इंडिया शोज हाउ सक्सेसफुली द इंडस्ट्री हेज ब्रेन वॉश दस इन टू बिलीविंग एजुकेटेड लोग जिम्मेदारी से पेंगे कुछ नहीं होने वाला हाई क्वालिटी पियो हमारा हाई क्वालिटी पियो नारंगी सरेंगे हमारा पियो ओके इलीगल अल्कोहल में मिथाइल अल्कोहल मरने से साल में एक हजार मरते होंगे लीगल इथाइल अल्कोहल से हर साल तीस लाख लोग मरते हैं दिस इज अ गुड इनफ पॉइजन इन इट्स राइट एंड नो वन स्टार्ट विथ हाथ भट्टी पीपल स्टार्ट विथ दिस ये उनको बर्बाद कर देते पैसे नहीं बचते फिर इलीगल पीने जाते और मरते सो द प्रिवेलेंस ऑफ अल्कोहल डिपेंडेंस India 9.1, USA 17.6, UK 13, France 11%. What do you mean by these numbers? अपने यहां गरीबी की वजह से बहुत सारे अदर फैक्टर्स की वजह से जितने लोग पियेंगे उसमें से ज्यादा लोग डिपेंड हो जाएंगे ठीक है 15 परसेंट बीस परसेंट चलो बट वहां पर भी 10 परसेंट तो डिपेंड होते हैं एडिक्टिव सब्सटेंस है थोड़ा कम होगा बट वहां पर भी होता है और क्योंकि वहां पे 90 प्रतिशत लोग दारू पीते हैं इसीलिए द इवेंचुअल प्रपोर्शन इज बिगर देन द नंबर ओवर इज दर मेक सेंस जिनको समझ समझ गए बाकी लोगों को समझा रहा ठीक है सो बिकॉज ऑफ अवर कल्चर ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन स्पाइट ऑफ अवर लोअर सोशियो इकोनॉमिक स्टाटा इन स्पाइट ऑफ अवर लोअर एजुकेशन पोवर्टी एवरीथिंग वी वेट प्रोटेक्टेड टिल नाउ But in the last 10-20 years, rapidly our culture is being eroded. Alcohol is being normalized, like in the Western world. Each film, the lead actress has to be shown to drink, and women are being targeted more. Why? Up till the market was men. Girls are being drinking more. The market is double. Right? So there will be parties where alcohol is free for the girls because they know थोड़े time free पिलाना है जिंदगी भर का customer है. Don't touch it just because you're giving it, you're being given free in a hotel, right? Women are being targeted. फिर कुछ लोग बोलते हैं अपने यहाँ binge मारते हैं. अपने यहाँ भी 50 percent से ज़्यादा drinkers binge मारते हैं. वहाँ पर भी 50 percent से ज़्यादा drink मारते हैं. और इसलिए जब तुम community level पे देखोगे क्योंकि अपने यहाँ अराउंड अपने यहाँ एक्सीडेंस रेट मेल्स में फोर्टी परसेंट है मतलब सिक्सटी परसेंट लोग ड्रिंक करते हैं तो उसमें से पचास परसेंट भी हो गया तो दैट कम्स टू अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट जो लोग बिंज मारते हैं फ्रांस में नब्बे प्रतिशत ड्रिंक करते हैं उसमें से पचास परसेंट आता है कम्स टू फोर्टी तो काफी सारे लोग बोलते हैं कि तो प्रॉब्लम इज अपने यहाँ लोग ज्यादा पीते हैं फ्रांस की तरफ बच्चों को कंट्रोल में पीने का सिखाने का अठारह साल के हो गए कंट्रोल में खुद के सामने बुलाने का इज द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व इन फ्रांस 46 परसेंट मैन इन फ्रांस से कि पिछले एक महीने में बिंद मारा था लर्निंग टीचिंग यंगस्टर्स टू ड्रिंक इन कंट्रोल इज नॉट द सोल्यूशन इट्स एन एडिक्टिव सब्सटेंस इट्स नॉट टू बी टच टेलिंग यंगस्टर्स इसको हाथ मत लगाओ दैट इज द सोल्यूशन Okay, just giving you one more example across the world. The problem in men is much higher. 
कंपेयर टू द प्रॉब्लम इन विमेन वाई विमेन ज्यादा स्मार्ट है कंट्रोल में ड्रिंक कर सकती है मेन विल बी मेन पी सकते हैं फंसते हैं विमेन कल्चरली आर नॉट सपोज टू ड्रिंक दे डोंट ड्रिंक दे डोंट गेट मार्क विदाउट स्पेंडिंग अ सिंगल पेनी द प्रॉब्लम इज मच लोअर इन विमेन बिकॉज कल्चरली इट वॉज नॉट अप्रूव बराबर है ना एक कल्चर था पहले जब बड़े घर के बोलेंगे बुरी चीजें मत कर अभी ऐसा कोई नहीं बोलता और पियो मजा आएगा बहुत लोग बोल रहे तो यंगस्टर्स पियेंगे कि नहीं पियेंगे वी नीड टू रिबिल्ड कॉन्फिडेंटली अवर कल्चर ऑफ एक्सटीनेंस एंड वी नीड टू डू इट सून एक बार वेस्टर्न कल्चर ड्रिंकिंग कल्चर अपने यहां आ गया फिर उसको बदलना मुश्किल हो जाएगा फिर दारू नहीं तो क्या पार्टी हुई दारू नहीं हुआ तो सोशलाइजेशन क्या है विल बिकम द नॉर्म बराबर ऑलरेडी द पियर प्रेशर इज हाई and if we allow the culture to be eroded it will keep getting higher so how do we maintain our culture of excellence point 1 we need to give awareness talks like what i am giving to you you can also go to schools colleges and give awareness talks as i said youngsters are not fools when i go to especially schools mein gaye to bacche to fool hain oh sir kya important bola sir sab school mein jaake batao sir bahut zaruri hai sir so they take it very well if you respectfully talk to them they appreciate it don't think youngsters don't want to hear abhi maine aap se baat ki how many of you felt kya bore kar raha hai yaar bhag yaar se how many of you felt that to jaise aap log smart ho baki youngsters smart hi hai na you need to respectfully go and tell them the truth but you need to go before the age of first contact ek bar shuru kar diya fir bheet pe tum patthar marte ho aisa hai to agar aapke society mein age standard 9 standard mein log shuru karte hain So eight standard, seven standard is the time to go and talk to them about what these things are. दूसरा families में भी बोलना जरूरी है and underage drinking के बारे में बोलना जरूरी है. What do you mean by that? जब हम young होते हैं, तब हमारा brain grow हो रहा होता है. उस time पे अगर तुम smoking या alcohol शुरू करते हो, the probability of you developing addiction is much higher. So जो लोग 15 साल से पहले दारू शुरू कर देते हैं. 40% of them get addicted aur jo log 20 years ke baad shuru karte hain 7% of them get addicted to youngsters se baat karte hue bahut bolna zaruri hai ki abhi tumhara brain develop ho raha hai abhi agar tumne iski shuru kar diya to the probability phas jaoge puri tarah is much higher to kam se kam 20 year 21 tak aapko drink nahi karna hai so this is a important message to give and parents need to be said ke you need to discuss this with your kids If you don't discuss, then colleges have become training grounds on how to drink. So if you don't give importance to this, so then your child is definitely going to start to drink. And children do listen to parents. You just need to educate yourself well, have a good bond with them, have fun time also, and discuss this issue also, and let them know clearly what your view on it is. At least recommend to karo. फिर शायद वो करे ना करे पर तुम रिकमेंड ही नहीं करोगे तो तो पक्का लेगा सो पियर प्रेशर वेन यू टेल यंगस्टर्स डोंट ड्रिंक यू ऑल्सो हैव टू टीच देम हाउ टू डील विथ पियर प्रेशर बिकॉज अदरवाइज एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ अ ग्रुप सो इफ आई हैव टू ड्रिंक टू बी पार्ट ऑफ अ ग्रुप हाउ डू आई डील विथ दैट सो यू हैव टू हाउ टू डील विथ पियर प्रेशर आज वी वोट डिस्कस दैट इंटरनेट पे आप चेक कर सकते हो बहुत कुछ मिलेगा बट यंगस्टर्स से बात करते हुए peer pressure kaise karna hai it's important to tell the other thing you need to explain them is denormalizing jo cheez hamare aaju baju bahut log karte hain wo normal lagne lagta hai corruption normal hai chalta hai right so mera kaka nana mama mausi doctor lawyer sharuk khan sab peete to fir chalta hai normal hai am i right so we need to tell them just because something is common in our society does that make it normal female feticide is common in our society normal child labor is common in our society normal if a common thing is helping our society we need to take pride in it as our culture and promote it but if a common thing is harming our society then what should we do 
should we not get together and urgently remove it from our society? So is alcohol helping our society or harming our society? So it's a common thing harming our society, it's not normal. It's something we need to get aggressively out of our society. Fair, uh, we need to shape the peer pressure around us in a healthy direction. Sif Shahrukh Khan Dhoni mein capacity nahi hai peer pressure banane ka. Hum mein bhi hai. Right? You may not have 1 million followers. But there are 10 people who respect you. There are your youngsters in your family, in your building. When you strongly recommend. You are doctors. You have a lot of respect. You can lectures to day sakte ho. But her patient ke saath sirf ek minute aapne ispe strongly recommend kar diya. Ek do studies quote kar diye, ek do experience bol diya. According to me, abe woh le raha hai. Strongly recommend. According to me, the best thing you can do for your and your family's health is quit this addictive life. Nahi le raha hai. Wow, you're not taking it. Great choice. Aaj kal itna common life thi nahi. Very good, smart. Continue. One minute. If we through our own example, as well as through the pu pu public stand we take, if we can also shape the peer pressure around us, we need to remove it from our family and community get-togethers and celebrations. Individually, jis ko jo karna hai kar sakta hai. But agar family ke get-togethers or parties or shadiyo mein aap pi reho, to ab youngsters ko message kya de reho? Tu bachcha is le nahi pi ne ka, bada ho ke pi ne ki chije. Right? So if you want to denormalize it for your youngsters, then taking it out of your get-togethers and families is easy. One easy way to spread awareness is to do it in the institution where you are working. For example, NIND mein kaafi log aate rahenge. Toh agar let's say roj shaam ko ya har Saturday ko ya koi bhi din, jab bhoat log aate hai, agar ek ghande ka alcohol pe talk har week rakha jai, so will it take more time for you to, I mean, what I want to say is, to the community mein jake talk dene ka bole to organize karo, logo ko bulao, mic karo, ye karo, go karo. Campus mein karne ka bole to kaam hi kar rahe ho, talk de diya, phir se kaam pe lag gai ya ghar chale gai. Get my point? So, and a lot, lot of people are coming here. So, holding awareness talks in your campus is convenient, time saving has a better impact because people are in a sensitive state of mind and you have authority. And it has a broader reach because it has a lot of different places. So in Sevagram Medical College, Varda, MBBS students have started to start with white coat army. So in one month, they have given a message for 20,000 people and they have given a message for 1,000 people. So when you do it, you have given a talk in a month. So you have given a message for someone else, someone else, someone else. So it's very easy for you to collectively spread the word. So, I am trying to make posters on it, videos on it, जो हम social media पे circulate कर सकते हैं। हमारे Facebook page का नाम है www.fb.com Truth of Alcohol and Tobacco। I would request you that you can log on to that page, like it, and share the posters which you like। मैंने आज कुछ चीजें skip की है। If you would like to hear the whole talk, it is on YouTube. It's called Poisons We Love, and you can share it with your friends. Okay, let's see what happens in this way. So, poisons we love, poisons we love, what can medicos do? Because there is another talk, you will get the link at the end of that talk. How to do brief intervention, I have covered it. Today, we don't have time for the brief intervention. But brief intervention is, in 1-5-10 minutes, how can you motivate people to stop? Okay? So, we will take it later, or you can watch it on YouTube. Just take it on YouTube. Just take it on YouTube. सिर्फ ये वाला देख लेते हैं। Where can you refer them for help? आप खुद डॉक्टर्स हो, आप खुद काउंसलिंग करना है करो। उसके अलावा आप अल्कोहलिक एनोनिमस को रेफर कर सकते हो। अल्कोहलिक एनोनिमस इज अ सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप। जो लोगों ने दारू छोड़ दी है, सॉरी मेरा हिंदी ज़्यादा गया ना। Those people who have quit alcohol, they help others to quit alcohol, and it's free. So you can give them the number of alcoholic anonymous. This number is wrong. I'm giving you a number. Take it down. The number is 809-70-55134. 809-70-55134. So if you call on this number, 
and tell the address where the person is staying across the country. They will tell you which is the nearest alcoholic anonymous center over there. So then the person can go there, or his wife or family members can also go there, and they will also be guided by others. Okay, how they can motivate that person to come. Okay, and or whatever support they need, they will get given. A psychiatrist or psychotherapist, counselor, they can teach craving management techniques to the person. Okay, when the craving comes, how to deal with the craving? There is something called as a benzodiazepine, diazepam, clonazepam. इस तरह की कुछ मेडिसिन्स होती हैं. They decrease the severity of the withdrawal. So if a person stops alcohol and he takes for seven to ten days this benzodiazepine and then stops it, then the severity of the withdrawal is controlled and it becomes easier for many people to stop. In fact, if the person is taken alcohol for around ten years and he gets complicated withdrawal. Then it's better to take medicine and stop, so that the risk of convulsion or delirium tremens or hallucinations won't be there. Of course, there are de-addiction centers. Poisons we love. How medicals can make a difference? It's my talk on brief intervention. You can see that. So to summarize, these are leading causes of death and disability and sadness in our society. We, as medical professionals, have respect in the society. If we choose to take a stand. Lot of people do change. I like to end with an example. एक बारबर के शॉप में मेरा फ्रेंड गया था. दो यंग बच्चे लोग बाल काट रहे थे. उसमें से उसने इनको तंबाकू खा रहे थे. उसने इनको बोला कि क्यों खाते हो ये वो. फिर नेक्स्ट टाइम गया बाल काटने. तो उसमें से एक ने छोड़ दिया था. एक चालू रखा. तो जिसने छोड़ दिया था उसको मेरे Lot of people, depending on whether you will take a stand or not, will decide. A lot of misconceptions are there. There is strong data we can use. I send the PPT to Madam. You can use the data. Of course, our bots are online sites are available there, and it's a critical time. Our culture is changing. We need to together spread the awareness and make it happen now. Thank you. For a very, you know, talk with a lot of information, they were eye openers, and he did it with a lot of entertainment. Didn't sound boring at all. And uh, Dr. Shah, this is a gold mine, and there are all these golden nuggets here. The doctors, the interns also, of course, and uh, those students are also training here. So a lot, lot of people with jacket of N I N. So yeah. they're studying what? Well, uh, they've come uh, to train in different uh, areas of naturopathy, and it's good that they are all here today. To me, sabre ala the acha badal ananda hai, dhanyavad karte ni. And like I said, our doctors here are wonderful, and I'm sure that they will uh, take up, you know, this uh, campaign that you have movement. We should say against alcoholism. So having said that, unfortunately, there is no time for question and answers. Uh, does anybody? Do you want to say something? You? Okay. Would you like to say something? Yeah. Quickly. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, thank you very much once again, and we hope you will be back with us. Online, and we can continue. Yes, we can if continue. If you would like to on. know more about how to counsel, so of course it requires much more detailed training. Role plays, so we can schedule online Zoom training sessions for that. We can have one and a half hour sessions, but you would need quite some time, around 12, 12 hours of training you would need. Uh, but of course, you can start yeah. with awareness. Yeah. And I think uh, he brought up uh, very simple tips for us. If we can have a support group within NIN, or there are doctors who want to take up this as you know their responsibility. To to work on this, it will be wonderful, and I think naturopathy is one way in which uh, we can reach out, you know, in a very gentle, you know, non-violent way to people <coughs> to stop you know, this uh, terrible thing. Uh, having said that, thank you once again. Thank you. Physically. Thank you everyone for the enthusiastic support you gave and listen so patiently. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.